In this short video, I'm going to talk about the idea of a psychological contract. The psychological contract is not the written contract that we might have, for example, in our employment contract or when we're purchasing something. It's really an understanding. It's the unwritten rules. It's the way we behave. It's mutual expectation, expectations, for example, between a, a pupil and a teacher or a doctor and a patient. There's nothing written there, but there's a kind of code of conduct. We know what's expected of each other. And implicit within this is an element of trust, a respect for the roles and each other. There's an element of commitment. I will do my bit, you will do your bit. So there's an implicit understanding about roles. And in an employed context, it includes things like job security and career development. If, if I stay here and work hard, I'll have a good future here and you will provide for my personal development. But also within that, there's this implicit contract around work-life balance. And you know, we hear phrases like work hard, play hard. That's part of the psychological contract. It's not something you're going to find in your employee handbook. So this psychological contract is personal, it's individual, but when you aggregate them all together, actually it forms part of culture. And that is also recognised in recognition and reward. Not just term, terms and conditions and pay and salary and the performance review and appraisal and the bonuses that you would get, but actually how much you are welcome as part of the in-group or push slightly to one side as part of the out-group, how much you have that sense of belonging and that recognition and reward as being a member of the team. It affects how we communicate with each other. I spoke a little earlier about those roles, a teacher pupil type relationship. Those types of roles affect our communication and how we support each other. It's really relevant because the psychological contract profoundly influences behavior and attitude. It impacts organizational performance and actually it sets the boundaries whether enabling or disabling our expectations, our setting the boundaries, realizing what's acceptable and okay and how hard we are supposed to work or how easy we're supposed to take things. There are many ways that we can shape, direct, inform, manage the psychological contract. Clear communication is key. It's how we instruct people and typically the onboarding process might have a culture book. There may be uh, a buddy that you have with you. Um, you may go through some learning and development tools. You may be accompanied by your, a colleague for the first few meetings. The whole of the onboarding process is actually saying this is the way we do things around here and it starts setting those cultural expectations and understanding the personal psychological contract. Likewise, frequent feedback and not just the feedback you'll get through performance view and appraisal, working with your manager and your colleagues, but actually the feedback that goes, oh, oh, can't say that round here or yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's fantastic. OK, so it's the unwritten feedback. It is linked to that culture, the way things go around here, but it's very personal. It's that psychological contract that says, actually, this is how I fit. This is how I belong. This is how I am supposed to work in this particular context. And where we make a faux pas, where we do something that was unexpected or unwelcome, Okay, there's a need to repair that. And actually, the process of breaking and repairing relationships is actually how we grow. It is how an infant looks at their caregiver uh, and reattaches, rebonds if they've left the room or if they've been crying. And in our lived experience, we're not perfect all of the time. We make errors, omissions, faux pas. And it's how we address those, recognize those, apologize. Uh, remediate, rebond, that key to that psychological contract of maintaining that relationship. What's really important is, of course, these things always change. Uh, the way we are 
and the way the organization is five, 10, 15 years ago are very different. So we are constantly adapting, so is the organization, so is the environment, the economy, the nation. Things do change and it's really important to be alive to that change when understanding and managing the psychological contract. Because what may have been entirely appropriate in 1975 certainly is not going to be suitable, feasible or acceptable in 2025. So I hope this has been a, a useful guide. It's a bit of a romp through the psychological contract, um, but it does tell us a little bit about culture and change. It's a useful thing to think about when coaching and mentoring, and it can be valuable to think about when it comes to facilitation and working in teams. If you're interested in pursuing any of those, please do give me a call. Thank you.